Hey, if you've been following NeoVim, you may have seen people talk about something called a language server. So NeoVim 0.5 has a lot of new features. Some of the coolest ones are they set up TreeSitter, which is a syntax highlighting engine that can be embedded inside NeoVim and controlled through NeoVim's Lua scripting engine, and LSP. What LSP does is it allows you to do IDE-like stuff like autocomplete, go to definition, hover over anything and see what the documentation for the function or variable you're hovering over looks like and do stuff like batch rename variables. This is now natively supported inside NeoVim. You need to install a couple plugins to make it work and to make configuring it easier. But it works really well and you get a full-on development experience inside NeoVim. So I'm going to be going over how to get that all set up and configured because it can be a little tricky and there's not a lot of documentation on it. Because these things are only available in the latest release of NeoVim, we have to install NeoVim nightly, v0.5.0. It's actually very stable. v0.5.0 is scheduled to be released any day now. In order to get that set up, you're going to need to fire up your browser and head on over to the NeoVim repo, github.com slash NeoVim slash NeoVim, and the releases page there. If you scroll down a bit, there's installation instructions for Mac OS and for Linux. So go ahead and follow those. You'll download the file through the little assets drop down here on NeoVim. And once you have NeoVim 0.5.0 configured and running, then you can start to have some fun. To give you a sneak peek of what that looks like, here's my NeoVim config on a JavaScript file with the TypeScript language server installed so we have full completion everything. So I'm going to fire up NeoVim. You'll notice currently at the bottom it says no active LSP because I don't have a file open yet. So I'm going to open my recently used files and go to this file. So as you saw, after a second, it popped up with this diagnostic message over here saying I couldn't find a model, module mdxjs slash react. So that message is coming directly from the language server itself. And you can also see that the language server is working because you've got this LSP TypeScript in the bottom and your file type is properly picked up as TypeScript TSX or React TypeScript. So some of the things this gets you, if I go up here and hit K on these, you'll get a little pop-up that explains what's going on and tells you any information the language server might have about your current thing. So app props, for example, is coming from Next.js, which has Next's type signatures all configured up here. So you can see exactly what kind of properties you get inside this app props thing that you're importing from Next. Better yet, if you're over inside a function and I want to do something like, say, my page props, you get this nice list of autocomplete things which breaks down what kind of things you're looking at. So I can pick page props from the list and use it there. Even cooler, you can do stuff like rename variables in line. So you'll notice this page props is being used in two places currently. If you hit the rename binding, you can set this to whatever you like. Um, let's say some new name. You'll notice that it went ahead and renamed them in both places. Depending how your language server is configured, in most cases, this will actually rename it across multiple files as well. So this is really cool and handy and takes a lot of the tedium out of working with this. All right, so let's get started and figure out how to get all this running on your configuration. I've just hopped over to a new user which has a simplified version of my config that I've put online. If you know how to work with VimScript and all of that stuff and don't want to deal with this, you can actually just head straight over to the repository and cherry pick the pieces of it that you like. So the repository for that is github.com slash nickvdp slash nvim dash lsp dash config. So this has an init.vim here that installs plugins that you'll need, as well as all the configuration to make these plugins work the way they should. All right, switching back to NeoVim. Let's open up our NeoVim init.vim file. NeoVim stuff is stored under tilde slash dot config, nvim init.vim. So this is the same file that you'll see on the repository I was just mentioning, but I'm going to go through here and explain what all is going on. So you need a plugin manager installed. I'm using a popular one called Vimplug. I won't go into how those work here. Any plugin manager will work. The trick is just to have the right set of plugins installed. These three are what powers the LSP servers. So nvim LSP config, LSP install, and LSP saga. You're also going to want nvim copy, which makes the auto completion work nicely as well as nvim tree sitter and nvim tree sitter text objects. Later on, we're also going to wire up telescope, which lets you search over 
files grep over the entire folder that you're in, open up any buffers you're in, change color schemes, all sorts of stuff. It's a really handy plugin. Plenary and pop-up are not actually used directly, but they're prerequisites of this telescope plugin there. And finally, it sets you up with Galaxy Line, which gives you a properly configured status bar. Once you have those installed in Vimplug, you have to activate them by typing plug install like this. I've already done that previously, so I won't be doing it here. And that's pretty much that. The next tricky bit is configuring them. The first thing we'll set up is telescope, which is just a major quality of life improvement. So you'll see here the, the mappings I've set up for them. You can change these to whatever works best for you. One of the handier ones is find buffer. So hitting a semicolon will show any buffers that you have open in the current Vim and allows you to fuzzy find around it. So notice how it's highlighting, even though I'm not typing them in order, it's highlighting them as it finds them inside there. So you can, with a massive list of files, this can get you down to what you're looking for really easily. You can also do a super powered search where you can do a fuzzy find inside your current file. So comma slash is what I've activated that to here. So let's say I want to go to the line where the unimpaired plugin was being used. I would just type plug unimpaired and it pops me over directly to that line. So let's use slash again to get back to telescope bindings. So this is the comment line that I found there. And here we are, we're right back at the telescope binding things. There's other selectors for other cool stuff like doing a live grep over all the files in your current directory or being able to open any file that's in the current Git repository or even searching over your own bookmarks. So a telescope is really handy. You can take a look at these bindings here and customize them to whatever works best for you. The next bit, the stuff that makes some of the things I was doing with the LSP a minute ago useful is the bindings for them. So you can copy these bindings out of this file here. One of the more handy ones is GD. That's what jumps to the definition of a variable you're looking at. I like to map that to control bracket as well because that's, that's easier to remember for me since that's how Vim does it. You can also do stuff like GR. I like to remember that as Git references, which will show you any places inside your current code base that are referencing the current file. And of course you can get help via K, as I mentioned before, for anything that you're looking at. And you can even call your LSP's auto format if the LSP supports it. And of course, rename variables and call code actions, which some LSP servers provide to do specialized actions over your code that makes sense for that particular coding language. The last thing that's worth looking at, the tree sitter stuff I mentioned earlier, these are requiring a little bit of Lua. So because these plugins are newer NeoVim plugins, they tend to use the Lua scripting language to configure and control them. I've moved most of the settings out here so you don't have to deal with them too much. However, if you want to customize the stuff that shows up in your status bar, or maybe change some settings related to how the autocomplete works, these are all inside the Lua folder in the Vim folder. So I'm gonna fire that up here. So config and Vim slash Lua slash status bar dot Lua. So here you go. Each of these GLS followed by a number show you one of the symbols and these are the components that make up the status bar you're looking at below. The text objects I was discussing about tree sitter earlier are inside the tree sitter dot Lua file. They're at the bottom of the file there. So these lines here are the mappings that I've configured. You can change these or customize them as you see fit. One thing to keep in mind when using these LSPs is that you need to install an LSP for every language you're working on. A minute ago, I was using JavaScript and the way I got that working is I did LSP install TypeScript. So this command supports autocomplete, by the way. So for example, if you want, if you weren't sure about what you wanted and you type pi and hit tab, it'll find Python, bash, pretty much most popular languages are covered here. Go, even PHP is available. So you can go ahead and LSP install whatever languages you need. And then if you were paying attention in the tree sitter file, TreeSitter also has its own parsers for all the languages you're using, and you can edit and customize these here to choose which languages are installed. You can also, there's a command for this as well, it's called TS install, and if there's some language that you wanted to use that's not on this list, for example, maybe you're a Haskell programmer, you can TS install just like that, and it'll go ahead and install it in the background. So you only have to do these 
once. In tree sitter's case, you can store these here and any computer you use it on will persist these and automatically install them when you start Vim. And in the case of the LSP servers, that functionality is not available yet. So you have to, you'll have to do LSP install and get it fired up that way. So since I'm looking at a Lua file, let's install the Lua language server just to show you how this works. Okay, so the Lua language server was just installed. And you'll notice immediately it started showing up with a feedback from these. So apparently this line has an extra space on the end. Deleting that makes that warning go away, etc. And K and all the other stuff we were talking about a minute ago is also available as well. So that about covers it. Take a look at the repository to get more details. And with these together, you should have a pretty complete IDE-like experience from inside NeoVim. The trade-off, of course, is you have to spend a little more time learning things like a little bit of Lua, a little bit of Vim script, and how to customize these. All right, until next time.